Are you a serious dinosaur model collector? Do you want to improve your collection by buying only the best and avoiding models that have design defects? If so, this is the show for you. This is episode four of the Dinosaur Toy Review Show. Today we are going to review the Kronosaurus models. George, as we always start off, what is the fossil record of the Kronosaurus? Do we have good samples to build off of? Initially, we didn't. In fact, um, some of you may know this, some of you may not, but when Kronosaurus or at least Pliosaurus was first discovered, it was described as Predator X. Predator X did not have sufficient fossil material to truly identify its size, so they greatly exaggerated it. In fact, they put estimates of almost 50 to 100 feet long. That's that's wow. whale-sized. So before we dive into them, what features are we going to be looking at to determine if this is an accurate model or not? First of all, we'll look at the mouths and the teeth. Next, we'll look at the flippers and the tails. And lastly, I'm going to be looking at body proportions because that was a big matter of debate in its discovery. All right. Where would you like to get started, George? Well, let's get started with this guy here from Safari. This is the Kronosaurus from Safari. And right off the bat, I love the color on this. Look at this striping. Uh, counter shading is present. But let's look inside the mouth. You see, this tongue is one of the biggest mysteries in marine reptiles. So we knew about the forked tongue in Mosasaurus. But this one, did it go all the way or did it stop right there? Because their mouths have a unique shape, which is what we're going to be looking for. So the lower jaw kind of has this bulb at the end, which is very good. And the top part was smaller as it would rest in between the lower part uh, of the teeth. So when it would close its mouth, the teeth of the lower jaw would actually protrude upwards. So that's that's very good right off the bat. The flippers should be almost proportional. There we go. Yeah, both flippers are correct. I'm going to turn it around and point out the tail. So the tail ends just like any other reptile tail just at a little point. It is flattened a little bit, but what I'm looking for is a more of a flattened tail for propulsion. A lot of animals that are marine have a flat tail that helps them swim, and this guy does not. Which one would you like to move on to next, George? I'd like to move on to this guy. This is... Collect A. Collect A. Ah, oh, This is a big guy. The mouth does open on this figure. And the, t the tongue goes almost all the way, a lot farther than the previous figure did. But again, we are looking for that distinctive mouth shape. This lower jaw does the opposite of what I said it should do. So this lower jaw actually sits under the jaw and the teeth don't go and overlap from the bottom up. In fact, they overlap from the bottom down. I mean, from the top down. If we look back at the flippers for their proportions, they are very proportionate, which is a big thing to look for in these um, chronosaurs. And would you look at the tail? We have a little flattening here, as well as a little fin. Kind of reminds me of a squid head, um, which would have been very helpful for propulsion through the water. So I'm happy that this one has it. It also has a very unique color. I have not seen a marine creature with this color, but I got to say, I am not hating it. This is pretty nice. A couple questions. One on the tail. Initially, I was expecting more of a horizontal mm -hmm. tail, whereas this is a vertical tail. Is that is the vertical one more correct? Yes, the vertical tail is more correct. Um, typically, if you have a horizontal tail, that's more reminiscent of uh, marine mammals. Marine mammals evolve differently from marine reptiles, so their locomotion is slightly different. Another thing to point out. I'm so. glad you noticed that. So that is a cloaca. For reptiles and even birds and dinosaurs, they had one hole for everything, as I like to call it. They used this to both urinate and defecate, so they went to the bathroom with this hole. But they also uh, reproduced and laid eggs with it. Did the safari model have one of those? It does, but 
it looks less like a hole. It's more of a slit. Yeah. So this is um, very similar to what marine mammals have. So we're going back to those comparisons. I think this is more likely what would have been there than just a hole like this. This is more reminiscent of or terrestrial reptiles. You wouldn't want water going anywhere inside you. So unless you were drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is scientifically a bit better re represented than this would be. And another thing that I wanted to look at on the collect a model was the jaw on the underside. It looks very mechanical. Are you going to take off any points for that? I would. Honestly, this is a, um, a little of an eyesore when you try to see the the natural form of these figures. I, I would take points off and it's also noticeable from the side. Anything else on that model, George? I'd say we pretty much covered it. Let's move on to the PNSO Jeff, they call this one. Yes. Yeah, so Jeff over here has a very funny face, which I, I love. It always makes me uh, chuckle when I look at it. The most striking thing about this is the lower jaw intersecting with the top jaw, just like I described it should be. So this lower part should be bigger and overlap on the smaller jaw. So right off the bat, extra bonus points for getting that accuracy. And like the previous figure, it also is able to open its mouth, but the joint isn't as drastic as the other one was. Um, if you look inside, the tongue is a little bit more conservative. Uh, again, we don't have evidence for it. I just like pointing out the differences. If we look at the flippers, these guys are a little less proportionate, or it might be the angle. Let's look at the other side. So that, that looks good. These are very proportionate, but the tail, that should be very neat to look at. This tail here has a different shape from all the other ones. This one is bilateral, so it's the same on both sides instead of just having one. And just like you know, you mentioned earlier, this is horizontal. This is not a vertical tail, so that's a different take than all the other figures that we've seen so far. There hasn't been any evidence of this yet, but it is a very neat um, the, this is a very neat feature they've added in. Now, as we were looking at the cloacas, this one is also different in the fact that it is also horizontal instead of a vertical, uh, opening. And it is a little rosy pink, uh, reminds me of a belly button actually, <laughs> <laughs> but it is also sealed, which is very good, especially if you're living in a water environment. You don't want any seawater getting in there. Um, so that is very good. It is beautifully countershaded. I do like the paint scheme. Uh, countershading means that it's lighter on the bottom and darker on the top. That helps if you're a hunter, you wanna hunt your prey and you wanna hide from them. And the only way to hide is with shading in the ocean. So that is, uh, this is a pretty neat one. I do like this one a lot. So that is the three Kronosaurus figures that we have, but we have a fourth bonus figure that we're going to look at. Yes, this is, I believe, Collect A, Pliosaurus. So this guy is uh, very closely related to Kronosaurus. Um, in fact, the whole family is named after this guy, Pliosaurus, or Pliosauridae for the nomenclature. This guy looks very sad. <laughs> uh, I look at these faces a lot and I think of their expressions, but uh, it's very hard to tell. Oh, actually not. This lower jaw is much smaller than the top jaw, which the, the key feature about these guys is that the lower jaw should be a little bit bigger and have these teeth intersect at the top. I will say this is a very interesting take on the color, kind of a more swampy, uh, color figure and if you notice there are some weird things attached to these guys which i would say are like lampreys yeah or conodonts um i wouldn't be surprised if back then these creatures had to deal with this with these other creatures <laughs> attaching and latching themselves on their uh sucking on their blood kind of like leeches that is a very unique take on a marine reptile that i've seen that's that's very new to me uh, the flippers are very proportional. These guys are very well balanced in the water. So that's something um, to always look at. But the tail, notice how it ends just like a regular lizard tail or a reptile tail. There is no flattening of it. 
Uh, in fact, it's very conical at the end, and there is no sign of a flipper or a fin. So I would say this guy is a bit more based off of what we used to know of them. Um, but it is a very conservative uh, figure. It didn't take any liberties like some of the other figures did. But I kind of like it. It looks very powerful, very very nicely colored too. Starting off considering money is no object, which figure are you going to go with, George? I would go with the PNSO one. This guy is beautiful. I do like the coloring. I like the fact that the jaw opens. And the accuracy on this one is the most accurate that I've seen uh, between all the figures. That would be my money is not an object choice. If money is an object, I would go with the Collect A Chronosaurus. This guy is, is beautiful. The only thing that kind of made me debate it was that joint on the lower jaw. It looks very tube-like. But other than that, the coloring, the size, the proportions are very, very nice. Are the other two models models you would avoid or just not your first choices? They are not my first choices. Um, I I would say of, of all the figures we've reviewed so far, these are the closest in scoring. Do you still have unanswered questions on any of these models or do you disagree with our conclusions? If so, check out below to find out how you can be notified of our live stream question and answer sessions. After certain episodes, we will put George on the hot seat to answer any additional questions or defend himself if you disagree with his conclusions. Also, I have a couple of favors to ask. Of course, give us a thumbs up and subscribe, but also if you could leave us feedback in terms of how we can improve this show. Do you want more detail? Do you want less detail? Do you want more of Kevin and less of George? Because clearly he doesn't know what he's talking about. Anything you can tell us now will help us improve these episodes going forward. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode. And stay tuned for the bloopers. In our last episode, we did the Mosasaur models. So at the end of these two episodes, you should have a great overview of which underwater dinosaur is the best for your collection. I'm going to have to correct you right there. These are not underwater dinosaurs. These are marine reptiles. To drill down on that, the last models were... The last models were Mosasaurus, which were marine reptiles. And these were actually sea lizards. There is a distinction. Here's an easy comparison. Sea turtles. Sea turtles are marine reptiles, right? They live in the ocean, which means they're marine, and they're reptiles because they're turtles. But a turtle is not a lizard. You wouldn't call a turtle a lizard. So the same way we describe a sea turtle is the same way we would describe these chronosaurs. They were marine reptiles, not exactly lizards. Like the mosasaurs that we reviewed in the previous video, mosasaurs had forked tongues and scales, and they, those are uh, lizard features as well as reptilian features, but specifically reserved for lizards. So this is why we're doing the videos to educate because I just learned something new. <laughs> is that how they would normally swim through the seas with their mouth open? They would not. They would only open their mouth to feed, um, maybe to yawn. <laughs> <laughs> or laugh at corny jokes. Yes. <laughs> oh man, I can't imagine one of these guys laughing. Probably a lot of bubbles. All right.